Hello and welcome back to my channel What If Deku 2.0. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off part one of our series. What if Deku had ability to steal quirks? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is NightwolfGamer03 from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Izuku Midoriya was a young boy. He was smart and kind, one day wanting to be like his hero, All Might. Though, by the time he was six, he showed no visible signs of a quirk. This was until one day. Izuku and his friend Katsuki Bakugo were playing in a park when something strange happened. The two were playing a game of heroes and villains, with Katsuki being the villain and Izuku being the hero. Katsuki was running quickly, and Izuku was catching up to him. Suddenly, as they approached the swing sets that lined the playground, Izuku noticed that his hands were shaking slightly. A strange feeling bubbled up inside the child. He knew it wasn't normal, but he didn't know why or how to stop this new occurrence. He glanced over at Katsuki, who was still running. I'm going to get you. Villain, Izuku yelled, running towards Katsuki. However, when Izuku actually caught Katsuki, he noticed a weird smell coming from his hands, and the fact that they were more sweatier than usual was also pretty weird. Damn it, Katsuki playfully yelled, not noticing the strange occurrence. Izuku shook Katsuki's hand as a display of good sportsmanship, but both of them noticed something weird. Hey, your hands are sweatier than usual, Izuku, Katsuki pointed out. Izuku looked at his hands. D, do you think my quirk is finally manifesting? Izuku excitedly asked. I mean, it could be. Katsuki shrugged, soon noticing that his hands weren't as sweaty as they usually were. Your quirk might be similar to mine. As he was saying this, Katsuki tried to show off his own quirk, but the explosion he made this time wasn't as big or as powerful as usual. Huh, what the heck happened to my quirk? Katsuki shouted in frustration. Izuku reached over to Katsuki, accidentally doing something that probably couldn't be undone. Izuku accidentally blasted an explosion in Katsuki's face, in a similar fashion to how Katsuki would use his own quirk to fend off against anyone who would want to mess with him. Only this blast was 36 times more powerful than what Katsuki could do. And this blast injured Katsuki quite a bit. Without a second thought, Izuku went to get both Inko Izuku's mother and Mitsuki Katsuki's mother, who were nearby, but not paying too much attention on the boys. Before either of them could react to Izuku's urgency, Izuku started crying. Mom, I hurt Kaken. He's hurt really bad, Izuku cried, pointing at Katsuki who was lying there on the ground. Soon, Mitsuki had called an ambulance, worried for her son. I'm sorry, Kaken. Izuku quietly told Katsuki, putting his own hand on his friend's head. When Izuku got home that night, he immediately went straight to bed, refusing dinner, he wanted nothing more than to forget about today's events. Unfortunately, sleep wouldn't come easily that night. A few days later, however, Izuku decided to go to the hospital to see how Katsuki was. Katsuki seemed okay at first glance. His skin wasn't burned, so Izuku assumed that the blast didn't injure too much. How are you feeling? Izuku asked, sitting down next to Katsuki. Like shit. Katsuki replied bluntly. Oh, well, I'm glad you're okay, Izuku said, smiling. Yeah, whatever. Katsuki rolled his eyes. So are you just here to visit, or? My mother thought it would be good to get my quirk checked out, so while I was waiting for the doctor, I thought I should come visit to see if you're okay, Izuku replied. Well, thanks, Katsuki replied. A few minutes after the short visit, Izuku and his mother were called into the doctor's office. So what exactly happened when your quirk manifested? The doctor asked Izuku. I was, I'm, playing heroes and villains with my friend, and I felt a weird feeling inside of me, 
and I touched my friend and he tried to show off his quirk, but he couldn't get it to, um, work. So I tried to reach out to him and then I accidentally blasted him in the face with his own, um, quirk, Izuku nervously explained. The doctor ran a few tests, like asking what happened the day after that, and if he still had the quirk. After all of the tests were complete, the doctor had come up with a theory. It seems that your son here has an emitter-type quirk that allows him to steal the power of other people's quirks while giving the original user a weaker version of their own quirk. The doctor explained. What does this quirk mean for him? Will he have any trouble controlling it in the future? Inko questioned. Not at all. It shouldn't cause any issues. But in case he does have any issues in the future, I just want to run one more test on your son. The doctor replied, taking Izuku to a room with three doctors. Izuku looked quite nervous, hearing about what his own quirk could have been. Sure, it was kind of powerful, but with the damage he had caused to his own friend, Katsuki, he was afraid that he'd be seen as a villain by the public and would never become a pro hero, like he had always wanted to. All right, Midoriya, I want to see what the limits of your quirk are, Sue so try to take each of these doctors' quirks. The doctor instructed. Izuku nodded and walked up to the first doctor. I have an emitter quirk called Evaluate, which allows me to analyze other people's quirks. The doctor explained. It isn't very useful to me, so you can take it. Izuku nodded touched the doctor on the arm. Before either of them knew it, Izuku had successfully taken the first doctor's quirk, leaving the doctor with a weaker version of Evaluate. I think I have your quirk now, Izuku smiled. Soon, Izuku looked at the second doctor. It appears you have a transformation quirk called Ignite, which allows you to ignite your body in flames. Izuku evaluated, though it looks like you haven't reached your full quirk potential. Though I guess it makes sense, because your body heat is depleted quite a bit whenever you use your quirk. That's actually correct. I have to always wear a coat when I use my quirk at home, but hey, at least you'll one day probably find a use for it. The second doctor smiled. Izuku prepared to take the quirk of the second doctor, before asking the doctor something. Will I burn myself whenever I use your quirk? Izuku asked. No, whenever I've used my quirk in the past, I've noticed that wherever I ignite my body, it becomes fireproof. The doctor replied, smiling. Now come on, kid, don't be shy. Izuku nodded, touching the second doctor and taking his quirk. Hey, that wasn't as bad as I thou, Izuku said, before uncontrollably igniting himself in random areas of himself, before stopping after a few seconds. It looks like after you take someone's quirk, you involuntarily use the quirk. One of the doctors pointed out. I guess so. Izuku nodded, walking to the third Dr. Butid. I have a mutant quirk I call tentacles, which gives me tentacles on my back. The third doctor explained. Now try to take my quirk and see what taking a mutant quirk does to you. Izuku nodded and touched the third doctor. After taking the quirk. The third doctor didn't have his quirk weakened, and Izuku had a similar version of the quirk. And a few seconds later, Izuku sprouted several tentacles on his back. Whoa, these are so cool, Izuku exclaimed. Good, now see if you can deactivate tentacles. The doctor instructed. Izuku nodded and deactivated tentacles, though it was harder to do. I guess mutants are harder for you to use, one of the doctors guessed. After a few more tests, the doctor had brought Izuku back into the room he was in before. So it looks like my prediction was a little incorrect. Your son's quirk allows him to take a portion of someone else's quirk, leaving the target with a weaker version of their quirk, and giving your son a stronger version of the quirk based on a number of factors. The doctor explained. For emitter-type quirks, it's Izuku's age times the target's age, for transformation quirks, it's Izuku's age times the target's age, then divided by half of Izuku's age. But for mutant quirks, the stolen quirk's power stays the same as when it was originally used. Inko looked at her son, smiling. 
Izuku, what would you like to name your quirk, sweetie? Inko asked Izuku. Izuku thought for a while. He soon realized that his quirk was similar to the symbol of evil, all for one. Izuku didn't want to be a villain. How about I name my quirk? One with all, Izuku announced. One with all it is. The doctor replied. I wish you luck into the world, Izuku. But what about Katsuki Bakugo? Will he be okay? Izuku asked the doctor. I can promise that Katsuki will be okay. The doctor clarified. In fact, he's being released tomorrow. Relief flooded through Izuku. Thank you so much, Dr. Izuku said, bowing slightly. The doctor simply smiled and waved goodbye as Izuku exited the room. Once they both left the hospital, both Izuku's and Inko's faces were filled with relief. They both sighed heavily, smiling. The rest of the afternoon passed quickly. After talking with Katsuki's parents, both Izuku and Inko visited Katsuki again. When the time came for Katsuki's discharge from the hospital, he took Izuku's accidental quirk usage. Mitsuki, however, didn't trust Izuku that much. Why aren't you scared of him? Mitsuki asked. Mitsuki, calm down. It was an accident. Inko sighed. He hurt Katsuki, and he still hasn't even apologized yet. I don't know what to think anymore. Mitsuki mumbled. You don't need to worry, everything is okay now. Inko assured. You should at least keep an eye on that boy. Mitsuki demanded. You don't know what he could do next. It happened because his quirk manifested. Inko tried to explain. I still can't believe it. Mitsuki muttered under her breath. We all make mistakes when we're young, Mitsuki. Inko smiled softly. Just accept it and move on. Meanwhile, Izuku and Katsuki were talking as well, in secret, though their mothers knew that they were there, just not what they were doing. So what you're saying is that you accidentally stole the power of my quirk, involuntarily used it, accidentally injured me, and then gave it back to me? Katsuki asked. Yeah, that's what happened. Izuku confirmed, I'm sorry for doing all of that. I forgive you, just don't let it happen again. Katsuki replied, And with both of our quirks combined, we'll be the greatest heroes ever. I hope so, Keiken, Izuku happily grinned. Well, this is the first chapter of If Izuku Midoriya Had a Quirk Similar to All for One. I hope I did enough for this first chapter, since a problem I've been having with writing is when I should wrap up a chapter. So I hope this chapter explains what Izuku and Katsuki's friendship will be like going forwards, and what Izuku's quirk, one with all, is like. And since this is an MHA fic, it seems fitting enough too. Name, Izuku Midoriya. Quirk, one with all. Izuku's quirk is an emitter-type quirk that allows Izuku to take a portion of someone else's quirk leaving the target with a weaker version of their quirk and giving Izuku a stronger version of the quirk based on a number of factors. Stockpiled Quirks Evaluate an emitter quirk that allows the user to analyze other people's quirks, given to Izuku by Shika Kishiki. Ignite a transformation quirk that allows the user to ignite parts of their body in flames, but the user's body heat depletes whenever in use given to Izuku by Sterling Shidoa. Tentacles a mutant quirk that gives the user tentacles that they can use at will, given to Izuku by Ikitako Shokashu. It had been eight years since Izuku was diagnosed with having the quirk he named one with all. His schoolwork had also improved drastically thanks to his new training methods, and his relationship with Katsuki has gone a whole lot better, especially since the two both had strong quirks. You're all third years now, it's time for you to start seriously considering your futures. Katsuki and Izuku's homeroom teacher told the class as he looked at them from the podium. While normally I would pass out these career aptitude tests, why bother? I know you all want to be heroes. The entire class, barring two, cheered as they showed off their quirks. Yes, yes, you all have very nice quirks, but using them at school is against the rules. So restrain yourselves. Hey, sensei, don't lump me in with most of these extras, Katsuki spoke up. 
Most of this lot would be lucky to end up as sidekicks to a busted D-lister. I'm the real deal. Predictably, his fellow classmates had something to say about that as they all tossed insults his way. Bring it on. I'll take you all on. Hmm, you do have impressive test results. The teacher commented. Maybe you will get into Yua. Cue the shocked exclamations of the rest of the class that Katsuki was trying to get into the number one hero school. That's why Yua is perfect for me, Katsuki replied as he stood up from his seat. I aced all the mock tests. I'm the only one at this school that stands a chance of getting in. I'll be more popular than All Might himself and become the richest hero of all time. People all across the world will know my name. And it all starts with Yua. Oh yes, Midoriya, you applied for Yua as well, right? The teacher asked looking over his paperwork. Yes, sensei, Izuku replied and all of the other students whispered among themselves. I hoped you would, quirkologist, Katsuki exclaimed soon after Izuku replied to the teacher's question. Together we'll be the best, you and me, quirkologist. Izuku then covered his ears. Not so loud, Kaken, Izuku told Katsuki. Oh, right. Sorry, I forgot about your sensitivities. Katsuki apologized, speaking in a normal volume. Izuku uncovered his ears. It's fine, Kaken. But thank you. The rest of the day had had gone the same as usual, nothing interesting happened. As the day ended, both Izuku and Katsuki's hype for the entrance exam for you were increasing. After Izuku had cleared up his things, he and Katsuki had started walking home. How do you think we'll do on the exams? Izuku asked Katsuki. We'll be fine. We just need to become more powerful. Katsuki replied, a grin showing up on his face. Speaking of power, have you gotten attacked by any villains lately? Not really, Izuku replied. Though I find it funny that whenever I do get attacked by a villain, I always gain a quirk after the attack. Speaking of that, how many quirks do you have now? I bet it's like 30 at this point, right? Katsuki asked Izuku. No, but you're pretty close, Izuku replied. I have 24 stockpiled quirks. The first three were from the doctors that wanted to see what it could do. Then I got 14 from when villains attacked me. And I got six of them from vigilantes. And my most recent one was from my mother as a present. That many, huh, quirkologist? Katsuki was surprised at Izuku's reply. Do you know how to use them all? Uh, well, mostly... I'm not too sure about quirk number six, gunpoint. It's kind of hard to tell when it is activated, but it does give me better aim, so at least that's not too much of a handicap. And I also don't know much about quirk number 17, gummy body. Though I know that it's a mutant type quirk and it gives me a rubbery body, but mutant types are harder for me to use, so it makes sense. I just hope I'll be able to make a use out of it and make the vigilante that gave it to me proud. Izuku infodumed. Yeah, yeah. Katsuki rolled his eyes. Anyways, I bet your mom knows about all those quirks of yours, doesn't she? Well, she may know some. She doesn't know all of them, but she knows enough of my quirks. Izuku responded. As the duo's conversation continued, neither of them noticed a sludgy villain standing right behind them. Before either of them had any time to react, the villain had jumped onto Katsuki, slowly consuming him. Ah, uh, Izuku, help me, Katsuki exclaimed as Izuku just stood there in fear. What quirk do I use? Ice blade? Ignite? Tentacles? Izuku pondered. I don't care what you do, just do it, Katsuki yelled. Don't worry, I'm just hijacking your body. Calm down, it'll only hurt for about 45 seconds. Then it'll be all over. The sludge villain chuckled, continuing to suffocate Katsuki. Without thinking, Izuku used a combination of the three quirks he was just thinking about, forming a blade of ice on his right arm, and two flaming tentacles coming out of his back, attacking the sludge villain, trying not to hit Katsuki. Katsuki, meanwhile, just couldn't feel anything due to the slime villain choking him. However, as Izuku continued fighting, he eventually managed to free Katsuki from the villain, 
and immediately ran towards him and healed him from his injuries using his regeneration quirk. After that, Izuku deactivated his quirks. They were both breathing heavily as they stood up, Izuku taking hold of Katsuki. Thank you, Izuku, Katsuki told him. Izuku just shrugged, blushing slightly. I didn't really do much. I didn't mean physically. You stopped him from killing me, Katsuki replied. After the sludge villain was about to retreat, a familiar face had show up. I am here, the number one pro hero, All Might, announced, collecting the remains of the sludge villain and putting it in a plastic bottle. All Might, both Izuku and Katsuki exclaimed in awe. Yes, it is me, All Might announced and I couldn't help by notice that you young boys got caught up in some trouble with this villain here. That's true. But I tried to use my quirk to attack him, Izuku explained. I see. Usually it would be illegal to use your quirk out in public like that, but since you used it for self-defense you get an exception, All Might said. Say, are you two planning on going into the hero course? Uh, yeah, kinda. Izuku replied. We're planning on applying to Yue, Katsuki explained. Well, I see. You two will become fine heroes one day. All Might nodded. Wait. Before you go, could you autograph my notebook? Izuku requested, taking out his notebook on pro heroes. Already done it, All Might exclaimed as Izuku looked in his notebook, amazed at the autograph from All Might in there. Wow. You really are almighty, Izuku exclaimed in awe. Now I must be on my way, All Might announced, jumping off. Izuku and Katsuki were both very speechless. Quirkologist? Yes, Kaken? Did what I think just happened happen? Well, what do you think happened? Did we just witness the number one pro hero being a pro hero? Yes, Kaken. That did just happen. The two then realized what had happened. We just got complimented by All Might, Katsuki and Izuku both cheered. I'll never forget this day, Katsuki exclaimed. This notebook will become a family heirloom, Izuku fanboyed, about to faint from all of the excitement. The two boys then ran home in excitement. For the next few months, the two trained with their quirks to get ready for the entrance exam for Yua. Katsuki mostly trained in making his explosions more powerful, but Izuku trained with his quirks in a number of ways. Both of the boys trained by cleaning up the beach with their quirks. They knew that they wouldn't get the beach fully cleaned up, but they tried. Izuku practiced with using quirk combinations, like using web shoot and vine whips allowed Izuku to make piles of trash he was collecting bigger, or using tentacles and objectify. Izuku managed to turn big piles of trench into smaller ones. Though as a dedication to his mother, Izuku mostly practiced with attraction of small objects, aka his mother's quirk, furthering the pulling distance and making the pull stronger. Katsuki mostly worked through his quirk. Using explosion to break through walls helped increase his strength while doing so which made him more useful than his explosion ability. He also learned how to make his attack stronger without destroying the structure of the building. He also learned to control it as much as possible and avoid breaking any windows in the house. His main focus was mainly on getting stronger in regards to endurance and speed. So far, he was having lots of success with the training, and thanks to this training, he's been improving even more each passing month as well as his combat skills. It wasn't that long ago that Izuku was still working on figuring out how to control all of his quirks. But now, with his new knowledge, he's been trying to figure things out faster. With his new knowledge, he's also been working on mastering the art of using his quirk on multiple people without affecting himself. Though in order to achieve this goal, he still needs to practice controlling his quirk on a larger scale. Meaning that, with his growing understanding on controlling his quirks, he has been able to control multiple people at once without worrying about himself or others. And with this, he's been able to successfully fight against his own limits and surpass them, achieving a level of control where he can actually defeat a stronger opponent without causing harm to himself. Overall, Izuku's been working steadily, 
and he hasn't lost his drive and perseverance. As such, Katsuki has become the main support of Izuku. While Izuku is currently at the stage of developing his quirk, Katsuki is working hard to understand his quirk and master it so that Izuku can use it without fearing for his own life. When it comes to physical fitness, Katsuki has gone a step further in training his quirk. He decided that he wanted to learn how to improve his stamina and keep up the best record he could so he would never have to rely on anyone else ever again. When it comes to martial arts, Katsuki has gone ahead and gotten himself a set of boxing gloves because he doesn't want to risk damaging his hands again if he gets hurt. When it comes to academics, Katsuki has gone ahead and studied a lot of subjects in hopes of gaining a greater knowledge of the subject, including history, geography, literature, science, economics, and the likes. Because he wants to get into UA, he doesn't want to fail any classes. At least that's what Katsuki thinks. He may not be sure of many things sometimes, but he does know that Izuku definitely cares for his academics, especially English. He knows that Izuku hates doing schoolwork in general, but he has to do it for Izuku. Even though he might seem reluctant about school, he knows deep inside that it's part of Izuku's dream to become a hero, and he'd do anything for Izuku. While training some more, Izuku learned of possible quirk combinations that he could use, though he learned that the more sane type quirks he used in a combination, the harder for Izuku to control the quirk combinations. As Katsuki has been busy preparing for the entrance exams, he hasn't been keeping up with Izuku as often, which leads to him not knowing of his friend's progress. However, despite being busy with studying for these exams, Katsuki is still extremely proud of Izuku. After a few more months, the entrance exam was coming up, and the beach was looking very clean. As a result, Katsuki and Izuku decided to train and improve themselves together practicing various different techniques and fighting styles, and even talking about how they wish they can work as heroes together. In fact Katsuki has already planned what he will teach Izuku. He wants to tell him about the basics, and then introduce him to more advanced techniques. And Izuku has promised that Katsuki can train with him after they graduate, helping each other grow their skills. Of course, if there was something that the two agreed upon, it would be the training. Of course, as the two teenagers trained, Katsuki noticed that Izuku was a little bit nervous about the upcoming exam. He was also starting to worry about Izuku. He seemed distracted during their training sessions. Are you feeling okay, Quirkologist? Something on your mind? Katsuki asked, concerned for his friend. Huh? No, nothing's wrong. Izuku assured, though he still seemed nervous. Really? Cause you don't look too good," Katsuki commented, noticing his pale complexion. Maybe I'm just a bit tired from training so much, Izuku responded. If you say so, Katsuki shrugged. But if something's bothering you... I know, Keiken, Izuku sighed, rubbing his forehead. A few weeks later, it was finally the day of the U, a entrance exam, Izuku and Katsuki were pumped. That day, they did a brief training session before heading to Yua. I am so excited for today, Izuku exclaimed. Oh man, I've been training so much lately. Yeah, me too, Katsuki said with a smile. I'm sure you'll get top score. Yeah, Izuku smiled back. Let's head over now, we should arrive early for the entrance exam, Izuku exclaimed. The two headed over to Yua hoping to arrive a tad bit earlier than most students. I am ready for Thai, Izuku exclaimed, before tripping on the ground. It wasn't long until Izuku was saved by a girl using her quirk on him. Oh, sorry, I should have asked before using my quirk on you, the girl apologized. It's okay, it's bad luck to fall on an important day like this, Izuku pointed out. True, I'm sorry she replied, apologizing again. Just then the bell rang. Hey, quirkologist, are you coming? Katsuki yelled out to Izuku. Oh yeah, coming, Izuku replied, before turning to the girl. I'll see you around, good luck on the exams. Katsuki and Izuku both excitedly ran into the U, a building. 
We are so pumped for this, Izuku and Katsuki exclaimed. After Katsuki and Izuku went inside, they made their way to the written exam. It wasn't too difficult. There were questions about quirks, heroes, politics, etc. Basically, it was just about explaining stuff that needed to be explained and asking the examinee to write down an explanation if needed. And of course, if someone didn't answer a question properly, the examination was over immediately. Either way, the written exam was a piece of cake. But the more important exam was next. The practical exam. What's up, you are candidates? Thanks for tuning in to me, your school DJ. Come on, and let me hear ya, pro hero, present Mike announced as everyone cheered. Now let's get straight to the main show. Let's talk about how Thai's practical exam is gonna go down, okay? Yeah, everyone cheered, Izuku covering his ears because of the noise. He knew that present Mike was quite loud and energetic, but he didn't realize just how loud and energetic he was. Oh great, quirkologist, you okay? Katsuki asked Izuku. Why yeah, just a bit, noisy, Izuku replied. Back when Izuku was eight, he had a pair of noise-canceling headphones with him any time it was too loud for him. He used them up until he was eleven which was when he started to get mocked for wearing them, so he stopped wearing them. At 11 years old, it wasn't too late for him to start wearing them again, though. Even so, he felt that he wouldn't get bullied without them. Like your application said, today you rockin' boys and girls will be out there conducting 10-minute mock battles in super hip urban settings. Gird your loins, my friends. After I drop the mic here, You'll head to your specified battle center. Sound good? Present Mike explained. Well, damn it. They're splitting us up so we can't work with any of our friends. Katsuki pointed out, whispering to Izuku. Yeah, you're right. Our examinee numbers are one after the other, but we're assigned to different battle centers. Izuku whispered. Looks like we'll have to work hard by ourselves. Well, you can't always rely on you allies to get the job done. Katsuki gave some advice to Izuku. I'll remember that, Kaiken. Izuku nodded. Good luck with the exam. As everyone parted ways, surprised at the large mock city that Yua called a training site. The fact that Yua had multiple sites like this one was amazing. Start, present Mike called out loudly from where he stood on a platform at the top of a tower his voice reaching out across the large testing grounds and to all the various groups of applicants. Everybody in Izuku's testing group froze up for a moment at the sudden start. What are you waiting for? There are no countdowns in real life. Run, go, go, go. With that Izuku and the rest of the examinees dashed forward into the large mock cityscape. Izuku ran slightly off course from the main group of students and found his first target quickly, a one-pointer according to the paper they'd gone over. Target acquired, eliminate. The machine intoned and Izuku couldn't help but grin as it moved towards him. Izuku prepared himself for his attack. Gunpoint plus jelly surprise plus heart bomb plus vine whips. Izuku formed two thorny vine whips on his arms that were pulsing with Izuku's heavy heartbeat on his back. Izuku then used gunpoint to perfectly aim at the one-pointer's feet and then shot jelly surprise at it, trapping it in place. Izuku then used heart bomb on his feet and jumped up to the face of the one-pointer, and vine whipped it in the face using his heart bomb enhanced vine whips, destroying it. Izuku had done this some more times, finding some two-pointers and taking them out by using a combination of attraction of small objects, objectify, tentacles, and ignite. Izuku formed several tentacles on his back, using attraction of small objects through the tentacles, taking out chunks of the two-pointers and then using objectify to turn them into big metal spheres and used ignite through the tentacles to set the spheres on fire eventually taking the two pointers out. Izuku realized that this technique was quite efficient and effective, so he kept the combination turned on. Meanwhile, the teachers watching the exam play out were talking about Izuku. What's that guy's quirk? A teacher wondered, pointing to Izuku. I initially thought that kid had some sort of trapping quirk, 
but clearly I must be mistaken. Another teacher replied. Why you don't think he's related to him, do you? Another teacher wondered with an expression of fear on his face. Calm down, Toshinori, you don't know for sure that he's his son. A teacher in a sleeping bag said, though it does look like the kid has some sort of copying quirk. What's his name, anyways? A female teacher asked. According to the files of all the students in the exam, his name is Izuku Midoriya. The principal answered, sipping on some tea. Back with Izuku, he had destroyed several robots, getting around 35 points. Though he still needed more points, so he looked around for more robots to destroy, only to find that there weren't many left. Time's running out, there's gotta be some more, Izuku thought to himself, his train of thought being halted by the sounds of people running and screaming. Izuku turned around to see that there was a zero-point robot chasing everyone. The robot smashes a few buildings and traps the girl that saved Izuku before the exams started underneath the debris. As the robot moves closer, it threatens to crush the girl. Wait, I recognize that girl, Izuku remembered, running towards the girl. Izuku briefly turned off his quirk combination, and then switched to a combination of his most powerful quirks. Gummy body plus jelly surprise plus heart bomb plus ignite plus hold up plus ice blade. Izuku swung using his rubber body to the robot, and used a combination of jelly surprise and ignite to trap it and settle robot on fire. Izuku then used gummy body to swing up to the robot's face and then used a combination of ice blade and heart bomb, slashing the zero-point robot in the face. Izuku then used his hold-up quirk and stopped the zero-point robot from doing anything else, throwing the robot away, then deactivating his quirk combination out of exhaustion, falling. Right before getting close to the ground Izuku is slapped in the face by the girl that saved him before the exam started. Thank you, Izuku said with a sigh. Nice of you to save my life. You wouldn't been fine if I hadn't helped you, the girl exclaimed happily. Just then, Izuku fainted because of exhaustion. After Izuku had fainted, he got taken by the nurse and she fixed everything he was hit with and then placed him in Recovery Girl's office to rest. Izuku had stayed unconscious while Recovery Girl took care of him. When he awoke he was sat on the bed in Recovery Girl's office. The girl that helped Izuku before the exam was sitting at the side, talking to her friend and laughing at something the latter said. But when she noticed that Izuku woke up, she smiled at him and waved, standing up. Welcome back, Midoriya, recovery girl said, walking into the room with a medical kit. How do you feel, dear? Ah, uh, fine, I guess, Izuku mumbled. I've bandaged your hands. Don't worry, you'll be able to use them soon enough, she told him. But we should probably check your forehead, make sure the bone in your skull isn't broken and all that jazz. I don't think it's broken, Izuku mumbled. Maybe a little bruised or sore, though. That's what I figured. Anyway, since you woke up just fine now, I'll let you go. I hope you don't have any lasting injuries, Recovery Girl explained. Um, thanks, Izuku asked. Izuku then walked out of UA, with Katsuki waiting for him outside. What happened to you, Quirkologist? I've been waiting out for ages, Katsuki asked Izuku. I used too many quirks at once and then I fainted, Izuku explained. Katsuki smirked. And here I thought you would want to stay longer in a combat training environment, he teased. I did stay longer than expected, but I'm pretty tired already, Izuku yawned. I think I'll just head home and catch up on my sleep. Whatever, Katsuki said dismissively. Let's just go home already. Izuku nodded and followed his childhood friend home. On the way home, Izuku went straight into his room and laid down on his bed, closing his eyes and drifting off to sleep. After a nerve-wracking few weeks of waiting for the results of the exams to be announced, the results came out the very next day. Izuku and Katsuki both agreed to open their letters at Katsuki's house. Both boys were excited, 
knowing that they would get answers to some questions regarding their future hero careers. Katsuki opened his letter first. It contained a hologram projector with a pre-recorded message on it. Katsuki Bakugo, you passed the written test, scoring a 95% overall. Principal Nezu announced. As for the practical exam, you scored a total of 100 points. Congratulations, you have been accepted into Yua. Oh hell yeah, Katsuki exclaimed in joy. Izuku opened his letter next. Izuku Midoriya, you've managed to pass the written test, scoring 98%. Principal Nezu announced. That's 3% over me, Katsuki interrupted. As for the practical exam, you scored 35 combat points. Principal Nezu announced. As for the rest of your points, due to your heroic rescue of Ochako Yoraka, you've also scored 75 rescue points. Overall, you've scored 110 points. That's the highest out of all of the attendees. We'll be glad to have you here, Midoriya. Both Izuku and Katsuki were grinning as they put down their letters and high-fived each other. It didn't take long for them to start crying happy tears and hugging each other tightly. After they calmed down they sat opposite each other in their living room on the floor facing each other. I can't believe it, Izuku screamed with joy. It's true, Katsuki shouted as he began jumping up and down. This means we'll be going to you, a together now, and we're gonna become heroes together. Katsuki's words made Izuku burst out into hysterical laughter, making them both laugh hysterically on the floor crying and hugging one another as hard as they could. Once they had calmed down, they stood up and embraced each other again, smiling brightly. We'll both become pro heroes someday, quirkologists, Katsuki shouted. Yeah, Izuku yelled. Soon, both Inko and Mitsuki hugged their respective sons, telling them how proud they are of the two. They congratulated the two, saying how proud they were of both boys which caused Izuku to blush a bright shade of red, causing Katsuki to laugh at how embarrassing Izuku suddenly was. Once everyone finally calmed down, they decided to leave the celebration and return home. When the party ended, everyone went home. Inko, Mitsuki and Masaru went home and Izuku headed to his room. Katsuki left after dropping Izuku off at his house, leaving Izuku alone, feeling happy about what the outcome of the exams were. He had been accepted into you, a high school, where he will work with a person that saved him. Who knew he would meet someone like Katsuki who wanted to be just as heroic as him? As he fell asleep, he dreams about his future hero career as well as his dream of being an actual hero. There was no doubt about it, this was going to be great. He couldn't wait for his lifelong dreams to come true. Izuku found it hard to sleep that night as he couldn't stop thinking about what the future held for him. Inko had fallen asleep a little early, but not before giving her son a kiss on his forehead and whispering sweet nothings in his ear before falling asleep. Everything was going to plan. I am so pumped for this, Izuku thought to himself, while sleeping. This was it. Finally the day that Yue's school year started. All of the best heroes went to UA Endeavor, best genus, even All Might went to UA, and now it was time for Katsuki and Izuku to head to UA. Have you got everything, Izuku? Inko asked Izuku. Yes, I think I'm just about ready to go, Izuku answered. Are you sure? You didn't just pack action figures, right? Inko asked. I have everything. Now I gotta go. I don't want to be late. Izuku replied about to walk out the door with everything. Izuku, Inko called out to her son. What? Izuku groaned. I'm really proud of you, son. Inko told her son. Thank you, Izuku smiled. And with that, Izuku walked out the door, ready for Yua downstairs. Katsuki was waiting for Izuku. Come on, quirkologist. I don't want to be late, Katsuki shouted. I don't want to be late, either. Izuku responded. The two boys started walking to UA, both looking forward to the start of their new life with one another. About twenty minutes later, they arrived at UA's gates. They both looked at each other, both still nervous about entering UA's school and being away from their families, but neither boy showed it. 
Instead of showing how nervous they both felt, they both just smiled at each other and entered the school together. 1A, 1A, Izuku whispered to himself, feeling a bit overwhelmed at being in UA's school. If we need to, we can ask someone where we need to go, Katsuki pointed out. Oh, okay, Izuku nodded nervously. Hey, it's okay, Katsuki reassured Izuku. You'll be amazing at this. I hope so, Izuku muttered softly. You are great at anything. Don't underestimate yourself. Katsuki tried to encourage Izuku. Sorry, Keiken, Izuku apologized. Don't apologize. Just focus on doing your best, Katsuki insisted. Thanks, Kaken, Izuku said, nodding to him. Good, Katsuki replied. Come on, let's get into our classroom. Once Katsuki and Izuku got to the, the classroom of class one, A. Izuku heard a familiar voice as Katsuki walked inside. Hey, I recognize that messy, green hair, a female voice shouted. Falling boy. Oh my gosh, it's that nice girl who talked to me, Izuku thought to himself. She looks good in that uniform. That punch you did was amazing, the girl complimented Izuku. So, uh, I should probably be thanking you saving me during the entrance exam. Oh, no need to thank me, it's what a pro hero would do, Izuku replied. I'm Izuku Midoriya, by the way. I'm Ochako Yuraraka. Ochako introduced herself. What do you think we're doing today besides orientation? I wonder what our teachers are like. I can't wait to meet everybody. If you're just here to make friends, then you can pack up your stuff now. Another voice had spoken up, startling Izuku and Ochako. Welcome to U.S. Hero Course. The voice was coming from one. A's homeroom teacher, Shota Aizawa. He is a slender and tall, pale-skinned man with messy, shoulder-length black hair that partially hangs in front of his face and half-opened black eyes. He sports a baggy black outfit that consists of a long-sleeved shirt and matching pants that tuck into his boots. He also wears a utility belt and his signature wrap scarf at all times. After the class had stopped muttering to themselves, Aizawa spoke up again. It took eight seconds before you all shut up. That's not gonna work. Time is precious, Aizawa scolded. Rational students would understand that. Who is this guy? He must be some sort of pro hero, Izuku thought to himself. But if he's here then, by the way, I'm your homeroom teacher, Shota Aizawa. Aizawa introduced himself. Though if you were wondering why asterisk I asterisk was late, then that's none of your business. Flash back. Aizawa was looking through his students' profiles to see if there was any extra information he should know about them. As he was finishing up, he got to Izuku's file. It's the student that got the most points overall in the entrance exam. Aizawa thought to himself, this will be fun to read. Name, Izuku Midoriya. Age, 15. Gender, male. Class, 1A. Teachers. Class, 1A teachers. Shota Aizawa Homeroom Teacher. Tashinori Yagi Foundational Hero Studies Teacher. Ectoplasm Mathematics Teacher. Hizashi Yamada English Teacher. Medical History. Allergies none. Known disorders, autism, post-traumatic stress disorder. Additional note. When Midoriya was a young age, he was constantly attacked by villains. So anything reminding him of those events will trigger his PTSD. Symptoms include being frozen with fear, curling up into a ball, blanking out, and unintentional quirk usage. Please be aware that because of his trauma, Handling villains is a hard subject for Midoriya, so feel free to send him out of the room if things are getting out of hand. How interesting, Aizawa mumbled to himself. Not only does he have PTSD, he has autism as well. Then, something clicked inside of Aizawa. If he gets involved with his classmates, he may experience some emotional stress as well. Maybe I should talk to him, Aizawa thought to himself. I'll have to do that later, 
I've only got two more files to read and then I have to get to teaching my class. End of flashback. Aizawa then passed out PE clothes to the entire class. Put these on and meet me outside. Aizawa instructed. You have five minutes. Outside, the class waited for their teacher's instructions. U.S. course doesn't follow the normal academic path, Aizawa explained. To help get to know your own quirks better, there's going to be a quirk assessment test. But orientation, we're gonna miss it, Ochako yelled. If you really want to make the big leagues, you can't waste time on pointless ceremonies, Aizawa informed. Here at Yua, we're not tethered to traditions. That means that I get to run my class however I see fit. All of the class gasped. You've been taking standardized tests most of your lives, but you never got to use your quirks in physical exams before. Aizawa monologued. The country's still trying to pretend we're all created equal by not letting those with the most power excel. It's not rational. One day, the Ministry of Education will learn. Every student looked worried at what they'd be doing. Midoriya, you managed to get the most points on the entrance exam. What was your farthest distance throw with a softball when you were in junior high? Aizawa asked Izuku. 57 meters, I think, Izuku answered. Right. Try doing it with your quirk. Aizawa instructed. Anything goes. Just stay in the circle. Izuku started thinking about what quirk he should use. Gummy body would give his throw more power, while heart bomb would do the same thing. Then there was Sparks Fly. Sparks Fly was a whole other story on what it could do. Hurry up. We don't have all day. Aizawa scolded Izuku. Sorry, sir. I just have a quirk that lets me store other quirks within me, and currently I'm torn between which one to use. Izuku apologized. We'll take this as a secondary training exercise. It'll help sharpen your mind and improve your decision-making skills. Aizawa gave Izuku some advice. Izuku then remembered that he could use combinations of his quirks. Gummy body heart bomb sparks fly. Izuku stepped back a little. He powered up his left hand, Eika the one he was holding the softball in, using heart bomb, and then threw it using gummy body and used sparks fly to keep its momentum up. 750 meters. That's impressive, Aizawa pointed out. All of you need to know your maximum capabilities. It's the most rational way of figuring out your potential as a pro hero. I want to go. That looks like fun, one student yelled out, excited. This is what I'm talking about. Using our quirks as much as we want, another student yelled. So this looks fun, huh? Aizawa then looked annoyed. You have three years. Here to become a hero. You think it's all gonna be games and playtime? No, sir. Most of the class groaned. Today you'll compete in eight physical tests to gauge your potential, Aizawa explained. Whoever comes in last has none, and will be expelled immediately. The entire class gasped. But that isn't fair. We got accepted into this school fair and square, Ochako retaliated. Oh, really? Well, do you know what else isn't fair? Natural disasters, villain attacks, catastrophic events that can wipe out entire cities, Aizawa scolded. Life is full of unfairness. It's a hero's job to prevent that unfairness. Now don't forget. Go beyond, plus ultra style. Everyone then nodded, agreeing with Aizawa. Don't make me regret this. Aizawa gritted his teeth together. Now that you know what you're in for, let the test begin. The first test was a 50-meter dash. Izuku watched as the boy with the legs that looked like engines and the girl with frog-like features took their places at the starting line. He was interested in seeing how his classmates did and what all of their quirks were, though he could tell at a glance that both of them had mutant-type quirks. Their times were impressive, though. The engine leg guy clocked in at just over three seconds and the frog girl at about five and a half seconds. Watching his classmates run, and in some cases, use their quirks in interesting ways to complete the 50 meters, really made Izuku wish he had his notebook right now. 
Ochako finished in just over seven seconds and seemed pleased with her result. The fawn-haired girl and the pink girl both finished at just over five seconds. Though the pink girl appeared to be skating on some kind of substance coming from her feet, which Izuku thought was a good way to complete the test. Finally, it was Izuku's turn. He was up against a purple-haired guy who looked like he didn't sleep much. Izuku thought hard about what combination of quirks he should use. It wasn't long before he was forced to settle with a combination of weight loss, heart bomb, and hot wings. While running, Izuku used heart bomb on his feet and formed two flaming wings on his back, while also becoming weightless because of weight loss, getting to the end in 3.51 seconds and the other guy getting there in 5.01 seconds. The next test was a grip strength test. Izuku looked at one of his classmates, who was masked up and looked a bit like an octopus, and knew he needed a combination of his strength-enhancing quirks. But Izuku didn't really have any quirks that enhanced his strength, except for one. Rhyming reason. I need to be strong, so my plans of becoming a hero don't go wrong. Izuku whispered to himself, going up to the grip strength tester thing. Rhyming reason boosted Izuku a significant amount. Not as much as the octopus guy's current strength, but it was pretty impressive. Taking the test, Izuku scored 342.16 kgs, which wasn't much, but then felt proud of himself after seeing some of the other participants' scores, particularly the guy he faced off against in the 50-meter dash. He had seemed to be using his quirk, but by the looks of it, it was hurting him. Izuku wanted to know what the guy's quirk was, so he used Evaluate on the guy. By the looks of things, he has two quirks, one called Brainwash and the other called One for All. Izuku thought to himself. Brainwash allows him to mind control anyone who replied to him in a conversation, and One for All allows him to stockpile an enormous amount of raw power allowing him to significantly enhance all of his physical abilities to a superhuman level. Though it clearly has a strain on his body, and I'm also getting readings of other quirks. Though the readings of those are very fuzzy, I knew I should have gotten my notebook. Looks like I'll have to remember his quirks until I can get to it. The next test was a standing long jump. While Izuku was waiting for his turn, he was reading the two quirk guys one for all quirk. Black Whip allows him to generate tendrils of black energy from his body that are good for capturing opponents. Danger Sense allows him to detect threats in the surrounding area. Float allows him to suspend himself in mid-air, granting him flight. Izuku evaluated, thinking to himself. Smoke Screen allows him to generate a thick cloud of smoke from his body. Fa Jin allows him to build up kinetic energy and expel it. Gearshift allows him to change the speed and or velocity of any target he touches, including himself. This allows him to greatly accelerate his own speed and or the velocity of his target, and enhance the impact force of his own strikes. Midoriya, you're up. Aizawa told Izuku, bringing him back to reality. Izuku nodded and walked up to where he was supposed to go. Izuku used a combination of heart bomb and gummy body and jumped across the sandpit. Once it was the one for all guy's turn, Izuku had noticed something. The guy couldn't control his own quirk. I wonder if it has to do with the fact that he has two quirks, Izuku theorized. I know that when I use more than five of my quirks, it's hard to control and it can even make me fall unconscious. I could possibly ask him about his quirks when the day ends, as long as he isn't expelled. The next test was the repeated sidesteps. Izuku didn't really use any of his quirks for this test, since he had used heart bomb a lot that day and didn't want to go through any of its side effects. Though Izuku did notice that the one for all guy was doing pretty well, even though his quirk was destroying him. There were three more tests before going back to the ball throw, but they weren't that hard and were pretty forgettable. As for the ball throw, Izuku had already done it so he didn't need to go again. The most interesting things that happened were that Ochako had scored infinity and was the entire thing when the one-for-all guy went up. Offa had tried to throw the ball, but he fails to do so. What happened to my quirk? 
Ofa asked Aizawa. I erased your quirk, clearly you can't control your quirk, Aizawa scolded. Then, Izuku realized who Aizawa really was. Oh my gosh, it's pro hero, eraser head, Izuku fanboyed. Yeah, it's me. My quirk allows me to erase someone's quirk by just looking at them. Aizawa sighed, before looking back at Ofa. So you erased my quirks. I mean, quirk. Only one. Ofa guessed. Izuku didn't get why the Ofa guy would lie about having only one quirk. If he had multiple quirks, why bother lying? Was it because if he said his quirk was only one, they'd think less of him and maybe expel him? But if the Ofa guy was able to hide his true identity and had been able to pass the practical exams, then maybe they wouldn't. Your quirk has a big drawback on you. Clearly you aren't fit to be a hero, Aizawa said to the Ofa guy. If I was the one that was judging who made it into UA, you wouldn't be here right now. Your quirk makes you a liability in battle. But that's what quirk training is for. If I try my hardest and never stop training, I'll be able to stop injuring myself with my quirk and become a hero. Ofa pleaded. All right, I'll give you another chance, but if you injure yourself badly. Aizawa scolded, bringing back Ofa's quirk. You'll expel me. I'll accept your challenge. And I promise my quirk won't do so much damage. Whatever. Just do it already. You have your quirks back. We don't have all day. Aizawa instructed. Taking Aizawa's advice into account, Ofa throws his pitch, and at the last second, he concentrates one for all through his fingertips. 703.05, impressive. Aizawa pointed out. Now with that, it's time for the rankings. I'll be showing them all at once so I don't have to explain about any of them. Momo Yayarazu first. Izuku Midoriya second. Katsuki Bakugo third. Tenya Aida fourth. Fumikage Takoyami fifth. Mizo Shoji sixth. Shoto Todoroki 7th, Aijiro Kirishima 8th, Mina Ashido 9th, Achako Yuraraka 10th, Koji Koda 11th, Rikido Sato 12th, Tsuyu Asui 13th, Yuga Aoyama 14th, Hanta Siro 15th, Denki Kaminari 16th, Kaioka Jiro 17th, Toru Hagakure 18th, Mashirao Ajo 19th, Hitoshi Shinso 20th. Turns out, the Ofa guy's name was Hitoshi Shinso. Momo had walked up to Izuku. I congratulate you on getting second place, Midoriya. Momo congratulated. Thank you, Yeyorazu, Izuku thanked. I guess I should congratulate you for getting first. Why thank you, Momo replied. Hitoshi, however, looked very distraught. They said I couldn't do it and they were right. Hitoshi mumbled to himself, looking like he was about to cry. It wasn't long before Aizawa spoke up again. I was lying, no one's going home, Aizawa laughed. That was just a rational deception to make sure you gave it your all in the tests. Almost everyone gasped. That's it. We're done for the day. Pick up a syllabus in the classroom. Read it over before tomorrow morning. Aizawa instructed. Midoriya, Shinzo, I want to speak with you both. The rest of you, be good and eat your vegetables or whatever. Once the class left, Izuku and Hitoshi had met up in the classroom so Aizawa could speak to them. Shinzo, you're first. Aizawa instructed. Shinzo walked up to Aizawa. While Izuku was waiting, he used his 23rd quirk, radio signal, so he wouldn't get bored. Izuku listened to the lastest news about villains, heroes' debuts, and so on. However, Izuku also worried about why Aizawa wanted to talk to him. Could it be that Aizawa was going to congratulate him for getting second? No, maybe he got expelled for something. He was surprised when he saw how serious Aizawa looked. Then again, he didn't really trust anyone else's judgment of people. After what felt like hours, Aizawa spoke. Midoriya, you're up, Aizawa told Izuku. Izuku turned off his quirk and walked up to Aizawa. So, Midoriya, 
I just wanted to talk to you about your PTSD, Aizawa said to Izuku in a sympathetic way. I think you need some help getting over it. Izuku stared at Aizawa in shock. He hadn't expected that and thought that Aizawa was just talking about his quirk issues. Are you all right? Aizawa questioned. Yes, of course, Izuku quickly answered. Is there anything I can do to help? Izuku didn't know whether to answer truthfully and risk making Aizawa worry about him, or lie and tell him there were nothing he could do. In his mind, he wanted to go along with Aizawa's idea that he needed help. After all, Aizawa knew so much more about the problem than he did. If Aizawa offered him any type of therapy, then maybe he could start feeling better. However, he didn't want to admit that he might not feel better if he told Aizawa about it. There is a possibility I might have problems getting better, but it's possible that the help I need wouldn't come until I've healed from my experiences with those villains I faced all those years ago. Izuku told Aizawa. Also, please don't mention my PTSD to anyone. Aizawa nodded his head. Even if Izuku didn't ask, he still felt that he knew what his reaction would have been. I understand, but remember that I'm here for you if anything happens. I will do everything I can to help you. Aizawa assured. I'm going to consult your mother about the situation as well, so she can give her say in it. Thank you, Aizawa. Izuku bowed his head. Good luck, Midoriya. Aizawa smiled as Izuku walked away. Once Izuku got outside, he noticed that Katsuki was waiting for him. Oh, Keiken, I thought you would have gotten home already, Izuku beamed. Nah, thought you could use the company. Katsuki smirked as they began their walk to Izuku's apartment. A little later, Katsuki had asked Izuku something. What did Eraserhead need to talk to you about? Katsuki asked. He wanted to talk to me about my PTSD, Izuku answered. And that there are people who can help me. But I know it won't work. Why not? Katsuki asked confused. That trauma? It follows me everywhere. Whenever I use my quirks, whenever someone ambushes me, even when someone says that they're going to do something really bad to me. It just takes me back to the trauma. Izuku trailed off. That's why I think it'll probably never work. So you're afraid of being treated differently because of it? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Well, that's stupid. They shouldn't treat you different. Katsuki snapped. They should respect that. It's a weakness. That means we've seen that you aren't weak and you don't need them treating you differently just cause of your trauma. Even if that's true, Kaken, it won't mean that the past hasn't happened. It'll mean that no matter what, it's still gonna affect me. How can I face others after that experience? Can you imagine the mental pain it'd inflict on me? Izuku cried. There's no point trying, and no point crying over spilt milk anyway. I already cried enough tears for myself to fill two entire puddles. No, that's not how it works. When your brain tells you things like that, you can't continue carrying this load around. You need to see a professional. Why, yeah, I'll get around to that. One day. A few minutes went by before they arrived at Izuku's apartment. See you tomorrow at training, Quirkologist, Katsuki called as he left. Bye, Keiken, Izuku waved. When he reached his apartment, Izuku collapsed on the couch. Once he calmed down, he grabbed an apple and sat up with his legs dangling over the edge of the sofa, his head resting on the armrest. After finishing the apple, Izuku laid back down onto the couch and pulled out the book that he had read earlier. After a chat with his mother during dinner, the sun was setting and Izuku fell asleep. This isn't going to be easy, Izuku thought to himself. I don't know if I can handle it. Izuku woke up at 4 am to go to his morning run. He had made it through most of the route, but there were moments where he stopped to catch his breath or slow down. When Izuku had finally finished, he headed to the shower. After getting dressed and brushing his teeth, Izuku decided to try to get his thoughts together. What am I supposed to expect today, Izuku pondered. Maybe the same thing that you've always expected for the past year. More training, but it's going to be harder now. After a few hours passed and Izuku had gotten ready for UA, said goodbye to his mother, 
and walked to U A with Katsuki. The two had gotten to class a bit early, the only student being there besides the two was Tenya Ida. Midoriya, Bakugo, how lovely it is to see you, Tenya exclaimed, chopping the air. Soon Aizawa had walked into the room, surprised at Katsuki and Tenya's presence. Mr. Aizawa, I believe you are a little early, Tenya pointed out, chopping the air again. I am aware, Ida. I just want to talk with Midoriya outside for a moment, Aizawa explained, taking Izuku outside. Once outside, Aizawa closed the door behind them. You wanted to talk to me? Izuku asked concerned. Aizawa gave Izuku one of his usual blank stares. I just wanted to let you know what'll happen today, Aizawa informed. You'll have the normal classes, like English and math, and then after that, you'll have basic hero studies. Also, with the permission from your mother, you've been signed up for counseling sessions with Hound Dog. You'll have your first session with him this afternoon. Really? You're signing up for that? Izuku gasped. Of course, Aizawa confirmed. Now, I need you to promise me something. Okay, Izuku nodded. Do not hesitate to speak up if you feel uncomfortable, and don't try and push yourself to talk. You need time to heal from all your experiences. You also need to take breaks to allow your body time to heal from the trauma. Izuku thought about all the words Aizawa said and sighed. He didn't really know what to say to reassure his teacher. You can always ask me anything, you know? Aizawa told him. I'll always be happy to help you out. I know. Thank you, Aizawa. Izuku smiled, grateful. All right. You can head back into the classroom now. I have some other stuff to do before the day officially begins, but feel free to do whatever, just as long as it doesn't break the rules. Aizawa told Izuku, walking off. Izuku walked back into the classroom, taking his seat. Katsuki then walked up to Izuku. So, what did Eraserhead need to talk to you about this time? Katsuki asked. Izuku whispered something in Katsuki's ear. He told me about how the day would go, and that I'm going to be seeing Hound Dog this afternoon. Izuku whispered, not wanting Tenya to hear, since it was none of his business. So, are you actually going to be seeing him or what? Katsuki asked curious. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it, Izuku shrugged. But I think you're right. I should try talking to Hound Dog about what I've gone through. If I get scared and start panicking again or lose control of my emotions because of those flashbacks, then it could make things worse and I could hurt someone. Or worse, I might kill someone. That's bullshit. That shit wasn't your fault. That was caused by something else. Katsuki scowled. If anything, it's the person who tried to kill you, not anyone else who has done nothing wrong. Katsuki, I'm serious. Izuku shook his head. Look, I know that what you've been put through is traumatic, and you should have been treated for it, but you weren't. It's no one's fault but whoever did it. Katsuki growled, anger clearly visible in his eyes as he continued. If anyone is allowed to blame anybody for your trauma, it shouldn't be you. You didn't deserve any of that shit. Now stop blaming yourself, okay? Katsuki was angry at the person that tried to hurt Izuku but he couldn't bring himself to blame Izuku for it, either. After everything that Izuku has dealt with, he deserves better. Thanks, Keiken. I'm glad that you understand. Izuku replied gratefully. Don't worry, quirkologist. I won't ever let anybody do something like that again. Katsuki declared while smiling. As Izuku started thinking about what Aizawa had told him, a certain phrase began to flash through his mind. He hadn't been able to figure out what it meant, but it kept coming back to him. It's not your fault. It's okay. You didn't do anything wrong. All these words seemed familiar, and yet? Why? Why does it feel so real? Before Izuku could even think about what those words actually mean, he heard his name being called. Midoriya. Upon hearing his name being called, Izuku turned his head around to find Ochako running towards him. She ran straight into Izuku, nearly knocking both of them over. 
As she landed onto her feet and stood up, she placed her hands on both of Izuku's shoulders. Oh, good morning, you're Araka, Izuku greeted. Good morning, Achako greeted. How are you feeling, Midoriya? Ah, uh, fine, Izuku lied. And yourself? I'm all right, thank you. I was hoping we could talk sometime later though. Right now I have to tell you about something important, Ochako exclaimed. Oh, ah uh, yeah, sure, Izuku agreed, unsure of what she was trying to say. About what? Well, I was wondering if you would like to come to lunch with us today. Ochako smiled. I'd love to, Izuku exclaimed, excited. Is everyone else going to? Yeah, Tsu, Ishido, Sato, and Kaminati. Ochako smiled, knowing that Izuku would enjoy being with the group more than by himself. And I'm also going to ask Ida if he'd like to join us, too. Can I ask if Bakugo would like to join us? Izuku asked. Sure, if you want to, Ochako smiled. Okay, Izuku smiled. Thank you, Yuraraka, for inviting me and asking. No problem, Midoriya, see you later, Ochako waved and went to greet others in the class. After going through the normal classes, lunch came around. Izuku and Katsuki had met up with Ochako. Together they had sat at a table with Tsuyu, Mina, Rikido, Denki, and Tenya. As lunch rush started preparing lunch, everyone talked amongst themselves and enjoyed their food, chatting happily with each other. The conversations were light, friendly, and happy until Mina asked Izuku something. Midoriya, what did Mr. Aizawa want to talk to you about yesterday? Mina asked Izuku. Izuku was flustered by this question, but before he could answer, Katsuki defended him. That's none of your business, acid face. Katsuki stated, crossing his arms. Quirkologist isn't obligated to share his secrets. If you want to make Quirkologist uncomfortable, Katsuki was then cut off by Izuku. Kaken, it's okay, she probably wasn't aware. Izuku interrupted. But Ashido, it isn't polite to be all nosy like that. If I want to share what Aizawa wanted to talk to me about, I'll share it. But if I don't, I won't. And that's okay. Mina then looked very guilty with what she had asked. Midoriya, I'm so sorry, I had no idea, Mina apologized. I didn't even ask if you wanted to tell me. It's fine, Ishido. There's no harm done. Izuku reassured her. But please note that you don't know what someone else could be going through, so it would be better if you wouldn't ask such personal questions. Mina lowered her head with guilt. I understand that, Midoriya. Mina assured him. I understand what you're saying about privacy. Good to hear it, Izuku smiled. Tenya then spoke up. Midoriya, I get what you're trying to say, but I noticed before homeroom, Aizawa-sensei wanted to speak with you, and when you came back into the classroom, Bakugo asked what he spoke with you about, but you didn't seem as flustered as you were with Ishido. Tenya pointed out. Why is that? Well, Ida, it's because me and Kaken have been friends since we were really young, so I trust him with personal information like that. Izuku explained. I see. Tenya nodded. Though I do apologize if my question was personal in itself. There's no need to apologize for a question like that, Ida. Izuku reassured his new friend. In my opinion, the best way to figure out if a question is personal is if it has to do with something personal in regards to something that has happened to the person that you're asking the question to. For example, if I asked you what your quirk is and what you can do with it, that wouldn't be a personal question. But a question like, what a teacher had to talk to you about after class, would be a personal question. Denki then raised his hand. But what if you don't know whether or not the question is personal to the person you're asking? Denki asked Izuku. Well, Kaminari, if you aren't sure then you should start the question with, if it's okay for me to ask, and then ask your question, and if the person finds the question personal, then they don't have to answer. But if they do answer, and they don't find the question personal, then it's important to listen to the person's response. Izuku explained. Now I have a question, Rikido said. How should I respond if I'm ever asked a personal question? 
That's a hard question, Sato. But I think I might know, Izuku replied. If the question is personal, but the person isn't aware of it, you can just tell them that the question is too personal for you. But if the person is aware, then you have the right to be offended and also correct them if they don't get why you're offended. Does it also apply if the person is trying to pick on you? Tsuyu asked. It does. Asui, Izuku replied. I'd prefer it if you called me Tsu. Tsuyu corrected. Oh, sorry, as... I mean, Tsu. Izuku apologized. As I was saying, you have no right to feel uncomfortable, and no person should try to take those rights away from you. Ochako smiled to herself because of how she could be making her own friend group. You know, guys, I honestly wouldn't mind hanging out again. Ochako spoke up. I agree, we should hang out again sometime. Izuku agreed. Sure. Why not? Though I do have to warn everyone, I'm not too good with names, so I'm definitely going to call you all nicknames based on your quirks. Katsuki warned. So that's why you call Midoriya, quirkologist. Achako realized. After lunch had ended, it was time for hero training. Everyone had already gotten changed. They waited at Ground Beta's entrance. Suddenly, the door to the building opened. Coming out was the symbol of peace, All Might. I heard rumors about All Might being a teacher here, but I didn't think it was true, Izuku mumbled to himself. Izuku's hero costume was a black, sleeveless bodysuit with green lines on it, black elbow pads and knee pads, and a respirator around his neck. Welcome to the most important class at Yua High. Think of it as Heroing 101, All Might announced. Here, you will learn the basics of being a pro and what it means to fight in the name of good. Ochako walked up to Izuku. You look good in that costume, Midoriya. Ochako complimented. I should have been more specific about what I wanted. Well, you look good in your costume either way. Izuku blushed, before noticing Katsuki, specifically his gauntlets that looked like grenades. Izuku had walked up to Katsuki. Hey, Keiken, what are those gauntlets for? Izuku asked. Quirkologist, I'm gonna keep it simple with you. Five words, it's a surprise, you'll see. Katsuki smirk. Remember this, you won't always know what you're dealing with, but once you know, use that knowledge to your advantage. Izuku smiled at this response, not that he liked it when Katsuki kept secrets from him, but it was because he always loved it whenever Katsuki gave him advice. All Might cleared his throat to catch everyone's attention. All right, you're all red now, so let's begin. All Might declared, most of the villain fights you see on the news take place outside. However, statistically speaking, run-ins with the most dastardly evildoers take place indoors. Think about it. Backroom deals, home invasions, secret underground lairs. Truly intelligent criminals stay hidden in the shadows. For this training exercise, you'll be split into teams of good guys and bad guys and fight two-on-two -two indoor battles. But remember, you can't just punch a robot this time. You're dealing with actual people now. Remember, go beyond. Plus ultra style. The entire class got exited, especially Hitoshi and Izuku. Hitoshi's hero costume is a short-sleeved black shirt, gray shoulder pads, fish net arm sleeves and fingerless gloves. His pants are also black, with purple rings around the bottom. The pairings were as followed. Izuku Midoriya and Ochako Yuraraka Team A. Hitoshi Shinso and Mizo Shoji Team B. Shoto Todoroki and Momo Yayurazu Team C. Katsuki Bakugo and Tenya Ida Team D. Yuga Aoyama and Mina Ashido Team E. Rikido Sato and Koji Koda Team F. Denki Kaminari and Kayoka Jiru Team G. Fumikage Takoyami and Suyu Asui Team H. Mashirao Ajiro and Toru Hagakure Team I. Ijiro Kirishima and Hantasiro Team J. Looks like we're together for this one, Midoriya. Ochako smiled. Izuku smiled to himself. This had been one of the reasons why he enjoyed spending time with his friends. He was lucky enough to spend almost every moment with them. 
as Izuku thought to himself, it seemed as though the others were thinking along the same line of thought. The situation is as follows, the villains are hiding a payload inside the building and the heroes must secure it or defeat the villains within a time limit. The villains are granted victory if they successfully protect the payload or capture the heroes. All Might explained, first up, Team A as the heroes, and Team D as the villains. Soon, Team D was instructed to go inside of the building first. So, this is what we're supposed to be protecting, Tenya pointed out the fake missile. Looks like it, Katsuki said. We're going to need a plan to make sure we don't let Midoriya and Yuraraka near the missile, Tenya explained. Midoriya said during lunch that you and him have known each other since you were young. How much do you know about his quirk? All I know is that he can steal the power of emitter and transformation quirks, and he can just straight up copy mutant quirks. Katsuki explained. He also has at least 24 quirks already stockpiled. I see, how much do you know about those quirks? Tenya asked. Not too much. Katsuki lied, in order to not reveal any personal information about Izuku. That does make sense, since quirk usage without a license is illegal. Tenya nodded. All right, I think I have a plan. Katsuki smirked. Meanwhile, Izuku and Ochako were looking at a map of the building. This building is so big, hopefully we don't get lost while trying to navigate this place. Ochako admitted, looking at the map in front of her. Don't worry about it, you're Araka. Izuku assured placing his hand over hers and giving it a gentle squeeze. I've got your back. Let's just focus on getting to the bomb safely. Once the five minutes of preparation was up, Team A entered the building. Katsuki suddenly ambushes them emerging from an adjoining corridor, ready to attack. Izuku froze, flashing back to the first time he was ambushed by one of the villains that tried to kidnap him. Come on, kid. The League is waiting for you. You'll be better off coming with the League. He's waiting, Izuku. You wouldn't want to disappoint anyone, Izuku. You're better off with us. With him. As soon as Katsuki could throw his first attack, Ochako pulled Izuku and herself out of the way. Soon, Izuku snapped back into reality. It's only Kaken. It's only Kaken. Izuku continuously told himself. Are you okay, Midoriya? You spaced out for a moment there. Ochako asked worriedly as she and Izuku started running. Why, yeah, I'm fine, Izuku lied. Izuku activated a combination of tentacles, hold up, and sparks fly. Izuku reached one of his tentacles and used hold up on Katsuki, keeping him in place, using sparks fly on himself and Katsuki, sending Katsuki flying in the opposite direction. Yuraraka, you go capture the missile. I'll keep fighting, Izuku planned out a strategy. Soon, Izuku deactivated all of the quirks he was using and charged at Katsuki. Well, 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 if it isn't Izuku Midoriya, how nice of you to join us again today. Katsuki pretended. Izuku thought of another combination to use. Chameleon plus rock plates plus heart bomb. Izuku turned himself invisible while also forming invisible rock plates on himself, while enhancing his jumps using heart bomb. Without Katsuki seeing him, Izuku had punched Katsuki in the face. What? Katsuki yelled in disbelief. Now Kaken, let's talk some business. Izuku revealed himself as he punched Katsuki in the gut, leaving him breathless. Before Katsuki could recover his balance, Izuku had already kicked him in the stomach again. Let's see what your gauntlets can do. Izuku smirked. You really want to know what I can do, huh, quirkologist? Katsuki smirk. These gauntlets of mine allow me to build up sweat over time and shoot them out. Like a grenade, Izuku gasped. Katsuki smirked, using his explosive sweat on Izuku. Izuku then activated rock plates once more, protecting himself. Why the hell am I fighting someone who uses sweat to build up sweat? Izuku cried, as he threw several punches towards Katsuki, managing to force him back. And why would I tell you? 
because I'm enjoying watching you squirm under my feet. Katsuki answered, dodging Izuku's attacks. Suddenly, Katsuki jumped behind Izuku and grabbed the boy by his waist before throwing him over his head, slamming him against a wall. Izuku groaned in pain as Katsuki lifted him up by his neck and slammed him down. Before Izuku could regain control of himself, a large explosion was fired from Katsuki's left side, exploding the floor. Katsuki stood over Izuku while still holding him hostage in the air. I'm not done yet, Midoriya, I haven't even begun. Katsuki grinned. Izuku struggled desperately against Katsuki's grip, but in vain. Katsuki kept holding tight onto Izuku, causing his breathing to quicken, and blood began seeping through Izuku's fingers. Izuku then activated Ignite throughout his body, turning himself immune to Katsuki's attacks. Meanwhile, Ochako had made it to the room containing the missile, where Tenya was guarding it. Soon, Tenya noticed Ochako. Midoriya, I'm up at the missile. What do I do? Ochako asked Izuku through her earpiece. Try to buy yourself some time. I'll see what I can do from down here. Izuku instructed through his earpiece. I'll try. But I can't hold him off for long, Ochako stated. Ochako had jumped in and waited for Izuku's move. I knew you would come here alone the instant that Bakugo ran off by himself and engaged with Midoriya. Tenya pointed out, Your quirk allows you to float anything that you touch, but I've prepared for that. By hiding every object in this room so you have nothing to use against me. Do gooder. My dastardly tricks have rendered you helpless. You've blundered, hero. Meanwhile, Izuku had punched the floor above him, using a combination of rock plates, heart bomb, and ignite, destroying the floors above him, including the floor that Ochako and Tenya were on. What did you do to the floor above us, Midoriya? What's happening? Ochako panicked, as soon as she heard explosions being released from below. Don't worry about it, Ochako. You can use your quirk now. Izuku exclaimed while using regeneration on himself, because he used a combination of more than two transformation quirks. Ochako had made a nearby pillar float and used it as a shield against Tenya's attacks. Caught in the onslaught of rubble, Tenya is unable to stop Ochako from using her quirk on herself again to jump the hole in the ground, grabbing the weapon and securing the victory for Team A. Team A walked back inside the room to find Katsuki lying on the ground and surrounded by debris. Tenya ran up to Katsuki and picked him up bridal style and ran outside. So you two won? Katsuki asked Izuku and Ochako. The two of them nodded. Well, good game. Quirkologist, I hope my acting skills will help you with that thing. To be honest, your acting seemed kind of real. Izuku admitted. Yeah? The acting was Engine's idea. Katsuki chuckled. Soon, Team A and Team D had made it back to the rest of the class. Well done, Team A and Team D. You really put up a fight in there, All Might congratulated. Everyone applauded both teams. So, up next, All Might announced, Team B and Team I, I hope you can both put on as amazing as a show as the first two teams. After Team A and Team D had faced off against each other, it was time for Team B and Team I to face off against each other. Team B served as the heroes, while Team I were the villains. Once in the payload, Mashirao and Toru knew they had to strategize. Ajiro, let's get serious. I'm gonna take off all my clothes and totally disappear. Toru strategized. Hagakure's using her quirk to our advantage, but it's kinda weird to know there's a naked girl standing by me. Michurel thought to himself, what exactly am I supposed to do here? Ah, just don't look, okay? Toru advised. What's the difference? Michurel asked, slightly chuckling. You know, it's kind of nerve-wracking being up here. Toru pointed out. I kind of agree, especially because of the previous fight. Michurel agreed. Though at least we all have only one quirk. And that Shinso's quirk hurts him, so this'll be a two-on-three match, Toru exclaimed. Meanwhile, Team B had made their way into the building. 
Mizo had used his duply arms to create several ears. My quirk allows me to, to reproduce any of my body parts, Mizo explained. So you can use your extra ears to detect what our opponents are planning, Hitoshi presumed. Indeed, I should be able to hear the commotion coming from the payload. Mizo confirmed, concentrating on his duplicated ears. All right, I can hear them. Hagakure has taken her clothes off, and I think she'll be coming for us. We'll have to be extra careful, then. Hitoshi nodded. The two started sneaking around trying not to make any noise or attract attention. So what do I do? Hitoshi thought to himself. I think that if I try to use one for all again, I'll cause too much chaos. But if I use just brainwashing, everyone will get suspicious. I have to think of a way around this. Soon, they didn't realize it, but Toru was standing right in front of the two. Unexpectedly, Hitoshi was punched in the face. Oh, ugh, Hitoshi groaned as Toru grinned to herself. Shoji, did you just punch me in the face? No, Mizo bluntly replied. Then who? Oh no. Hitoshi realized something. Hagakure. You fell right into my trap. You don't know where I, Toru laughed before being brainwashed by Hitoshi. Sit down. Hitoshi commanded as Toru did that. Now sit still while I wrap you up with this capture tape. As Hitoshi eventually started tying Toru up, Mizo looked impressed. That's one powerful quirk you've got there, Shinso. Mizo complimented Hitoshi. And you didn't even injure yourself that time. Oh yeah, it's a part of my quirk. Hitoshi lied, finishing what he was doing and unbrainwashing Toru. No fair, Toru yelled. Soon, Mizo and Hitoshi had started running. Do you think Ojiro is also coming out? Hitoshi pondered to Mizo. From what I heard when I was listening in, Ojiro will most likely still be protecting the bomb. Mizo explained. So, it'll be a two-on-one fight then. The two eventually were greeted by Meshirao, who was in a battle stance. So, you got past Hagakure, huh? Meshirao glared. Well, I might be outnumbered, but that doesn't mean I'll give up so easily. Oh really? Hitoshi asked. Yi, Meshirao was then brainwashed by Hitoshi. Come out here. Hitoshi ordered, Meshirao doing as he said. Good boy. Mizo looked between Mashirao and Hitoshi with confusion. He thought it would be better to stay out of this. Fight. Hitoshi had then walked up to the bomb and touched it, securing Team B the win. After that fight, the rest of the fights were as followed. Fumikich Takoyami and Suyu Asui Team H, Heroes vs. Ijiro Kirishima and Hanta Siro Team J Villains. Winners, Heroes. Denki Kaminari and Kaioka Gyro Team G Heroes vs. Momo Yayarazu and Shoto Todoroki Team C Villains Winners, Villains Yuga Aoyama and Mina Ashido Team E Heroes vs. Rikido Sato and Koji Koda Team F Villains Winners, Heroes Now that all of the teams had gone once, All Might had gotten an idea. Now we're going to switch things up, All Might announced. For those who were heroes, you'll be villains. For those who were villains, you'll be heroes. Izuku didn't know how to feel about this. His past trauma was caused by villains trying to attack him. Or rather kidnap him. He didn't want to be like that. He just wanted this day to be over. He wanted to go home. He just wished that dealing with his trauma was easy. He wished that being a hero was easy. But it wasn't. Heroes have to deal with villains all of the time. Some days, Izuku just thinks that he isn't fit to be a hero. Heroes are supposed to be strong, not mentally weak like he is. Uh, Mr. All Might, sir? Izuku raised his hand. I don't feel very good. Can I sit out of this, please? Nonsense. Heroes have to deal with things like these all of the time. If you want to be a hero, you'll have to go into this like a true hero. Or a villain, in your case, young Midoriya. All Might replied, denying Izuku's request. Maybe All Might was right. If Izuku wanted to be a hero, he had to be a villain. So Izuku sighed and nodded. Prepare to die, Izuku. 
prepare to die, Izuku told himself. First up, Team F versus Team A, All Might announced. Izuku sighed a sigh of relief. His team was going up first, so he didn't need to worry about going later. As he and Ochako walked into the payload, they decided to talk strategy, among other things. Midoriya, do you have a quirk that can create constructs? Ochako asked Izuku. No, but I do have a quirk that allows me to shoot out a sticky slime that sticks to anything. Izuku explained. That's as twice as good as what I was going for, Ochako cheered, making Izuku blush. Are you able to put it everywhere so it's harder to get up here? Of course, Izuku nodded, going to do just that. Jelly surprise plus hot wings plus gunpoint. Izuku formed two flaming wings on his back and flew around everywhere in the building, shooting jelly surprise and used gunpoint to shoot it out accurately. Then after doing that, Izuku made his way back into the payload. Okay, I did it. Izuku smiled, deactivating his quirks. Good, now we just wait and see what happens. Ochako nodded. Soon, after the five minutes of prep time was up, Team F entered the building. This might be a little bit harder than I thought it would be, Rikido thought to himself, mumbling. Then again. Rikido then looked at Koji, who seemed nervous. Don't let this get to you, partner, Rikido advised him. It's only a training exercise, it's not real. Koji then nodded as the two walked into the building. They had noticed that almost the entire area had been covered in Izuku's jelly surprise. Uh oh, Rikido gulped. Do you think they're trying to capture us? Koji shrugged in a way that meant, I don't know. When they reached the elevator shaft, narrowly avoiding the slime, the pair could hear multiple echoes from above. That sound came from above, Rikido whispered. Should we go in? Koji nodded. The duo quickly ran up the shaft and towards the top, taking cover under the ledge. As soon as they got up, they began their search for Team A. So, what's your quirk? Again, Rikido asked Koji. I can control animals with my voice. Koji signed. But you don't talk much. Or rather at all. Rikido pointed out, Koji nodding. Well, you should try to talk more, maybe then people will notice you. Koji nodded. Team F had soon made their way around, still looking for Team A. Meanwhile, Izuku and Ochako were talking, while protecting the bomb. So how did you get all of your quirks? Ochako asked Izuku, making him uncomfortable. Let's just say that I got them from certain misadventures. Izuku replied, flustered. Ochako didn't realize that she accidentally brought up bad memories that he hadn't exactly spoken about yet. However, Ochako felt guilty about it so she went with it, knowing that Izuku wouldn't have minded it. It wasn't long until Ochako heard something. They must be this way, there's the most slime around here. A voice whisper yelled, it was hard to tell, but it was obviously Rikido, since everyone knew by this point that Koji didn't speak. This made Ochako very nervous, she didn't know how long the jelly surprise would last. So, what's the plan? Izuku asked. Uh, uh, Ochako stuttered, trying not to have a panic attack. Jay, just try to stay on guard, okay? Izuku nodded. The two waited quietly for Team F's arrival. It had been a while since either one of the two had heard of Team F's whereabouts, so they assumed that they must have been trapped in Izuku's jelly surprise. Soon, before Team F had a chance to come up with a plan, time was up. Team A wins, All Might announced through the loudspeaker. After both Team A and Team F had eventually exited the building, with Izuku having to free Rikido and Koji from his jelly surprise, the rest of the battles had happened. When Hitoshi and Mizo went up as villains, they faced off Ijiro and Hanta, who were heroes. Team J won the match because Hanada managed to capture both Hitoshi and Mizo with his tape quirk, keeping them distracted, while Ajiro captured the bomb while Team B was distracted. Afterwards, Fumikage and Su went up, this time as villains, up against Mashirao and Toru who were heroes this time round. Team I won this match 
since Meshurao kept Su busy while Fumikage had searched for Toru, who was using her initial nude strategy, and managed to secure the bomb, though nobody actually saw her. After that, Shoto and Momo had gone up against Denki and Kayoka. However, the roles were reversed, with Team C being the heroes and Team G being villains. Team C won this match because of their superior quirks being able to overpower Kayoka and Denki. Then the last fight occurred. This time, Katsuki and Tenya as the heroes and Aoyama and Mina as the villains. In the payload, Mina had tried to think of a strategy but couldn't think of anything. I have some doubts about our opponents, Mina admitted. Our quirks aren't going to help us. What makes you think that, Ashido? Ayama asked his teammate. Well, our opponents seem more experienced and confident in their fighting style, Mina pointed out. If we take too many risks and don't focus enough during the fights, then we'll end up hurt if we're taken advantage of. H.M. hummed in thought. Well, in that case, let's concentrate on our offense. Yes, let's take advantage of our opponent's weaknesses, Mina cheered. Indeed, Aoyama nodded. Meanwhile, Katsuki and Tenya were standing right outside of the building. So this is what it's like from the hero's perspective, Katsuki muttered. We'll be able to take down Acid Face and Naval Laser, easy. Then, the match had started. Katsuki and Tenya ran into the building. Tenya followed Katsuki, who blasted himself ahead, though Tenya managed to keep up with him because of his engine legs. What do you think their strategy is? Tenya asked Katsuki. I'm guessing they're going to use their quirks. Katsuki answered simply. Tenya nodded in agreement. Soon, the two had made it up to the payload but they had noticed that neither of them looked very prepared. Don't come any closer, or I'll dissolve you with my acid, Mina exclaimed, preparing to shoot out some of her acid. Is this the extent to which this plan has gone? Katsuki wondered, glaring at his opponents. He shot forward towards Mina, intending to destroy her acid. Once he got close to her, Katsuki grabbed one of her feet, lifting up and using his explosions to propel herself upwards and away from the building. Oh, shit. Katsuki cursed under his breath. Shit, 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 fucking shit. Katsuki tried to pull Tenya up after him and failed miserably. Damn it, he growled, holding the hand that held on to Tenya's leg. Bakugo, are you all right? Tenya asked worriedly. I'll live, bastard. Katsuki rolled his eyes. Suddenly, Mina shot some more acid down at Katsuki, hitting his hands causing him to lose grip on Tenya. Tenya quickly shot forward, grabbing onto Katsuki's foot as well. Thank goodness you stopped me, Tenya panted. Now let's make sure you stay down this time. Whatever. Katsuki grumbled as he allowed Tenya to float him to the ground. After he landed on the floor, Tenya quickly moved to stand behind Katsuki and placed a hand on his shoulder. Once Tenya was satisfied that he was safe, he turned around and faced Mina. Well, have you given up now? Katsuki roared. TCH, of course not. Mina snorted, readying another attack. Mina shot acid at Katsuki, who dodged, sending an explosion towards Aoyama, who was distracted by Tenya. The explosion sent Aoyama flying back, smashing into a wall behind him. While that had caused him to be knocked unconscious, it didn't stop Mina's attack. She sent another wave of acid towards Katsuki, hitting his left arm. Katsuki yelled, pulling out his hand from his burning arm. How dare you touch him, Tenya screamed at Mina, charging forward and throwing a punch at her face, only to miss due to Katsuki holding him back. Shut up, you idiot, Katsuki screamed, glaring at the blonde boy, who continued to scream at Mina. While Mina was distracted by Katsuki and Aoyama was left unconscious, Tenya had successfully secured the bomb. Team D wins, All Might announced. Once everyone was together, All Might had made a statement. Now see here, you've now experienced what it's like to fight villains, even though they weren't real. All Might stated, 
Pro heroes have to deal with villains all the time. But you should know, if this were to happen once you become pro heroes, there would have to be much more to take into account. Can anyone tell me what things? Momo raised her hand. Where the bomb is being kept, what civilians are around the building the bomb is being kept, what villains are guarding the bomb, who your allies are in the situation, and where the building is located. Momo listed off. That is correct, young Yayurazu. When all of those are taken into account, a good strategy is needed to secure victory. All Might explained. Though I do have a few notes about your performances. For one, young Midoriya, when you were on the hero's side, you froze up when confronted by young Bakugo who was on the villain's side. If you want to be a great pro hero one day, you'll have to drop whatever is going on in your mind. And another note ifs that before you were going up as a villain, you tried to leave the class, of which I presume is to skip class before it's over. That is not a good explanation for anyone training to become a hero, and I'll have it followed up with your homeroom teacher. All Might's notes on Izuku were very incorrect. Had he not read the notes on each of the students, and he also told Izuku to drop his flashbacks, clearly meaning he hadn't read the notes on anyone. The rest of All Might's notes weren't as discriminatory in the brain parts of everyone, but the drawbacks of everyone's quirks. Like on his notes for Aoyama, he said, Stop getting stomachaches when you use your quirk. A pro hero never feels pain, so you won't either. Or for Denki, he told him that he needed to snap out of his short-circuiting if he wanted to get past the first week of Yua. All Might was a great hero, but just not a good teacher. This was even worse when he didn't read the notes of anyone at all. You are all expected to be strong. If you don't act like it, you'll never be pro-heroes. Also, I even expect any neurodivergent students to act like everyone else, even though they aren't always worth it. All Might yelled in a heroic way, not realizing how hurt he made most of the class. Soon the day was over and the school bell rang. Class dismissed. All Might dismissed the class. Izuku especially felt hurt after that class. He adored All Might, to be called not worth it really hurt him, and he knew All Might hurt Slot of the others, and by the looks of it, also Denki, Tsu, and Tenya. Izuku was sure that others were hurt by All Might, but those were the only ones that showed it physically. Izuku walked to Hound Dog's office, both excited and nervous about his appointment with him. Well, Izuku, here goes nothing, Izuku told himself. Izuku Midoriya, Hound Dog greeted. I, ah, uh, gee good at afternoon, sir. Izuku bowed, making Hound Dog chuckle a little bit. You can just call me Ryo during these sessions, Hound Dog clarified. Hound Dog's office was a nice and cozy one. It was clean, bright, spacious, with comfortable seating, a small table with a coffee machine and a couple of bookshelves along the wall with a lot of other useful objects that could help. It looked quite cozy. Hound Dog gestured to Izuku to sit down on a nearby sofa. While Izuku took a seat, Hound Dog leaned against his desk and folded his arms. So, Izuku, you're here today because you have trauma from the past, correct? Izuku gulped. He knew exactly why. But at the same time, it wasn't something that came naturally to him. Yes, Ryo, Izuku anxiously nodded. Are you able to tell me more about this? Hound Dog asked Izuku. When I was about six or seven, I started to be constantly attacked by villains. It mostly stopped happening when I was fourteen, but every time it happened, I felt like I was going to die. Izuku explained, starting to cry. Hound Dog noticed this and handed Izuku a couple of tissues. I'm sorry for this, I just... Izuku apologized before being cut off by Hound Dog. Midoriya, there is no need to apologize. Hound Dog comforted. Those attacks must have been really hard for you, especially now, where in becoming a hero, you'll have to deal with villains at least one time. Yeah, Izuku sniffed, wiping away his tears. It still hurts me when I think about it, and I wish I could stop thinking about it sometimes. I understand, but you cannot change the circumstances that happened in your life, 
but there are ways to make it feel less painful. Hound Dog advised. Ways such as talking about them. There are people out there who love you and want you to achieve you dream of becoming a hero. There are, Izuku asked. Yes, there are. Now, you mentioned something called PTSD. Uh, yeah, it's basically just trauma, anxiety, fear of people hurting you, Izuku replied. Is that why you are always so jumpy and anxious? Hound Dog questioned. Yeah, it seems to be a part of it, Izuku sighed. Hound Dog nodded, then spoke again. So what does the PTSD represent? Izuku took a deep breath and spoke. It represents having a problem with someone hurting me, or threatening me, or killing me. It's kind of difficult to explain, but... Hound Dog listened attentively and nodded. I see. He thought for a moment, tapping his finger against the desk. I'm glad you're willing to discuss this with me, Izuku. Other students like you that I've had aren't willing to be this open about their past trauma, though they shouldn't be forced to talk about the things that make them the most uncomfortable. Hound Dog paused for a second. Do you think you will continue with your therapy sessions with me next session? He asked. Of course, Izuku smiled slightly. Now what exactly do you feel when you have those flashbacks? Hound Dog asked. It's usually a bad feeling, I feel unsafe, scared, and alone. Not to mention how the flashbacks affect my body, Izuku answered. But there is one thing I always try to ignore, and that is seeing the death that happens to those that are around me. That's understandable, Hound Dog reassured. If you'd like to keep going, I suggest taking notes, doing some research, maybe even working through your trauma in a different way. Thank you, sir but I'm not exactly looking forward to it. I guess I'm afraid that the flashbacks won't ever go away. Maybe the worst part is, I don't know what they mean. I only know that I'm feeling them, and they are awful. Hound Dog pondered for a second. How did you cope in the past with these episodes? He questioned. It wasn't easy. I would get flashbacks a lot back then too, but they weren't nearly as frequent as the flashbacks are right now. I couldn't handle them, though. I was just too weak then, Izuku replied, not liking that he brought up such painful memories, but knowing that this might be a chance for him to actually say something important about what is bothering him. And after this happened, my mom helped me out. She bought me medication, talked with me, helped calm me down. But the flashbacks have gotten worse since then, so much worse. I haven't been able to get over those villain attacks. Izuku responded sadly. Hound Dog was concerned for Izuku, and while he didn't know enough about what had caused this, what he did know gave him a sense of foreboding for when this would happen again in the future, or if ever. His instincts were telling him something was wrong. Would you be willing for me to talk to your mother? Izuku froze, staring blankly. Though eventually, he nodded. His mother needed to know what was going on with him, since she loved him dearly, since he was the only company she had left. All right, before we finish up today, I have a few more questions to ask you. Hound Dog stated, as Izuku stood up and walked towards Hound Dog to listen. First question, if I am right, are there many times when you have flashbacks? Like multiple times. This question took Izuku aback a bit, since he hadn't actually considered the answer. The truth was, yes. Izuku nodded. Are there any ways that you know how to cope with this? Hound Dog asked. Izuku shook his head, meaning no. All the schools I went to before I started high school just told me to stop being traumatized, and they also said that they should change what they're doing to be inclusive to everyone. They just shrugged me off as an unimportant weakling that'll never be. Izuku stopped himself before finishing saying that last line. A hero. Hound Dog was shocked to hear this. This is definitely not the first time he heard something similar to this. In fact, most people seem to be very dismissive of those that are struggling with mental health issues. He didn't blame people, but he knew it was his job to care for anyone who has one, so he hoped he would find some way to help Izuku. I understand your position, Midoriya. However, that is completely normal. 
If you do have flashbacks often, please let us know immediately, or we may end up having a long session about them. Do I make myself clear? Hound Dog asked, sounding almost angry now. Izuku quickly nodded, understanding the situation perfectly now. Understandable, Izuku whispered. Hound Dog cleared his throat and got back to asking about the flashbacks. After asking the rest of his questions and gaining more information about Izuku's conditions, the session was over. All right, our next session will be next week, and I'll inform your mother and anyone else who needs to know about what we talked about today, Hound Dog informed Izuku. All right, bye Mr. Hound Dog, Izuku waved, exiting Hound Dog's office. Once Izuku was outside, he noticed someone. Katsuki was waiting for him. Huh, Kaken, I thought you would have walked home by now, Izuku pointed out. Well, I thought you could use some company, that's all, Katsuki explained. Well, you know, you don't have to always look out for me, I can handle myself just fine, Izuku assured Katsuki. Well, what else can I say? If you get attacked by villains again, I'll be able to help you out. Katsuki smirked, wanting to help his friend out if he ever gets into any trouble. Not much later, in the teacher's lounge, the principal of UA, Nezu, and All Might in his deflated form, Akatashinori Yagi, were talking. How was your first time teaching here at UA? Nezu asked his colleague. It was quite informative, Tashinori replied. I believe it was a great experience. Wonderful, Nezu exclaimed taking a sip of tea. Did you remember to read the notes on each of your students? Oh, ah, I was planning on doing that, but I had a lot of work to do, so I didn't have any time to read any of them. Tashinori explained. Well then, you might as well take the time now to read up on class one. A while we have our chat, Nezu instructed. Oh, so soon, but don't you think? Tashinori was about to ask trying to avoid the task that was bestowed upon him. Nonsense. The more you know about them, the more ways you'll know how to help them, Nezu interrupted. Oh, of course, I'm just not used to this new job yet. Tashinori apologized. Would you like me to get you the files, or will you? Nezu asked Tashinori. Ah, you know what? I'll go get them. There's no point in looking for something you probably won't find. Nezu walked off. Tashinori was less than pleased. His lack of experience teaching as well as his internalized ableism made it very hard for him to be able to be inclusive when he was teaching. As he trailed off in his thoughts, he was greeted by the sound of a familiar voice. So, I heard that you're about to read the notes on my homeroom class, Aizawa walked in. Huh? Oh yeah, I didn't read them before. Toshinori replied, before being cut off by Aizawa. Before you taught your only class, Aizawa interrupted, a stern look on his face. Oh, yeah, but I had a good reason to. How so? I, I was busy. Doing what? Well, I was being a hero for about three hours, then I had to do some stuff around the school, and then I had to get ready to teach my first class. That's not a rational way to be a teacher, Aizawa glared. And do you know how I know you didn't read any of the notes? Momo Yeyurazu told me that you said neurodivergent students should be like everyone else even if they aren't worth it. Well, you shouldn't have to accommodate the needs of neurodivergent students to make things more inclusive for them, Tashinori replied. If they want to be treated the same way as everyone else, then maybe they should leave. And do you really think that they would? Look around at how many kids are struggling in their classes at Yua, Aizawa challenged. If you want to be a good teacher, then you should know that disasters and villain attacks aren't the only unfairness the world has to face. Neurodivergent people don't choose to be neurodivergent. It doesn't help that society chooses to mock them instead of help them. And yet you're still making exceptions for them. Toshinori sighed, realizing he wasn't getting anywhere with this argument at the moment. I do, because that's my job, Aizawa replied simply. 
But you need to learn a lesson from all these examples too. Don't forget, we've got a lot of kids who struggle with learning. They don't choose to become neurodivergent. We shouldn't exclude them, either. It wouldn't be fair to everyone. Aizawa left after this conversation, and Toshinori stayed behind to continue thinking about everything he had heard. Toshinori was dismissive of what his other colleague said to him. He knew that neurodivergent people don't choose to be neurodivergent, but he didn't know why inclusivity mattered so much. Before long, Mezu came back into the room, holding 20 folders. Here are the notes of all of your students, Nezu announced, giving them all to Toshinori, who put the pile on the table in front of him. So do you have anywhere else to be or? Toshinori inquired. No, except for here, where I'll be supervising you while you read the notes. Nezu replied. Toshinori was less than surprised to hear this. After all, Nezu was known to be quite observant. Plus, he had to give Toshinori enough credit to admit that he had been ignoring his own advice, despite telling him to read the notes. Great. Toshinori muttered, before opening up the first folder. Both of them remained quiet. This was until Toshinori got up to Izuku's notes. Name, Izuku Midoriya. Age, 15. Gender, male. Class, 1A. Teachers. Class, 1A teachers. Shota Aizawa Homeroom Teacher Toshinori Yagi Foundational Hero Studies Teacher Ectoplasm Mathematics Teacher Hisashi Yamada English Teacher Medical History Allergies None Known Disorders Autism Post Traumatic Stress Disorder Additional Note When Midoriya was a young age, he was constantly attacked by villains, so anything reminding him of those events will trigger his PTSD. Symptoms include being frozen with fear, curling up into a ball, blanking out, and unintentional quirk usage. Please be aware that because of his trauma, handling villains is a hard subject for Midoriya, so feel free to send him out of the room if things are getting out of hand. How interesting. For one, young Midoriya seems to be, uh, intellectually impaired. Toshinori was interested in Izuku's notes, more of his ableism showing. That definitely explains why he wanted to leave class early today. Nezu just nodded, unsure of how to deal with the number one hero's ableism, though he did try to give Toshinori some advice. If you don't know any terms shown in the files, you can search them up online. Nezu hinted. Of course, of course, Toshinori nodded, unable to get Nezu's hint. Meanwhile, Aizawa was still in the halls, thinking to himself. Soon, he'll learn. Just because someone is neurodivergent, it doesn't mean that people have the right to be ableist. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through What If Deku Had Ability to Steal Quirks? I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout-out to NightwolfGamer03 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works the link is in the description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to What If Deku 2.0 for more fascinating explorations into the world of